So let's go ahead and create a new part. To start the creation of a part, we always start with a 2D sketch. And if possible, we try to sketch on the XZ plane. Let's create a rectangle that's 5 by 4 inches. So you'll notice that the corners of the rectangle are very pointy. Let's say we want to round them out. We would use the fillet tool. When I select a fillet tool and I select two sides, the corner becomes rounded out. Now, let's say I want this corner to be more rounded out. You'll notice that there's a number 0.5 here, which represents the radius of the fillet. By increasing that number to, say, 1 inch, you'll see that the curvature becomes more pronounced. But there's also another tool that we can use to modify corners. If you head over to the fillet and we select the down arrow, there's an option to use a chamfer, which is basically cutting off a corner. If we select two sides, then you'll notice that the corner becomes cut off again. Click OK. The dimension that shows up here is the distance of the cut. You notice how this distance is one inch. Let's go ahead and finish sketch, and we'll extrude our sketch up one inch. We can also use the fillet and chamfer tool while we're in the 3D modeling mode. Up here, you'll notice that the fillet tool can be selected, and we can also select multiple edges and fillet them. And we, of course, we can adjust the radius of the fillet. The chamfer tool works very similarly. We just have to select edges, and we can adjust the distance for our chamfer. You'll also notice that these features show up in our model browser, and if we do not want them anymore, we can always delete them. Now let's say I want to make some equally spaced holes on our 3D model. Let's go ahead and create a new sketch on the top face and make a circle of diameter 0.25 inches and we'll move it such that it is half an inch from the top and half an inch from this side. As a rule of thumb, you can click and drag your dimensions to make them neat and organized. If I wanted to make more circles that ran down the length of this face, I could keep on making identical circles over and over again. But I can also use the rectangular pattern tool. Select that, and you'll notice that a window pops up asking for geometry and directions. So for geometry, since we want to duplicate these circles, select the circle. And for direction, which would be the direction in which we're duplicating these circles, select this side. And you'll notice that immediately a green arrow pops up to indicate the direction of our duplication. And a faded circle appears that is a duplication of this circle in this direction. Right here, we have the count of the number of circles we want to create. So increase that to four. And you'll notice that in total, there are four circles. Our original one plus three duplicates. You can also increase the spacing between the circles to, say, 1.25 inches, and you'll notice that our circles are now more spaced out. Click OK, and you'll notice that four circles appear that are identical and spaced out 1.25 inches. In addition to the rectangular pattern tool, there's also a circular pattern tool. Before we jump into that, let's create a line. If we run our mouse along this line, you'll notice that a green dot appears. This is the midpoint of the side that is currently highlighted in green. If we use that as a starting point for our line and run it all the way down, we'll have created a line that bisects this line. Now let's create a center point arc. And if we want that arc to be at the center of this line, we'll run our mouse along the length of this line again and wait for the green dot appear, to appear. There it is. And let's say we want a arc of 0.5 inch radius. And we want it to go 180 degrees. So currently, we've created a semicircle that is centered along this line. Now let's go ahead and create a circle 
at the point where the semicircle intersects the line. Let's make it 0.25 inches in diameter. And now let's jump into the circular pattern tool. You notice that when the window pops up, there's a geometry option and an axis option. For geometry, since we want to duplicate this small circle, we'll select it. And for axis, this is the path along which the duplication will occur. We'll select the semicircle. Immediately, you'll notice that some faded circles pop up. And currently, there are six, because our count says that there should be six. Let's put that down to four. And we can also adjust the angle over which this duplication occurs. Right now, it's at 360 degrees, so the duplication happens all the way around. Let's say we reduce that to 90 degrees. You'll notice that all the circles are bunched up in a 90 degree uh, rotation. Let's bring that back to 360 degrees and select OK. And you'll notice that four circles appear uh, that are duplicated over 360 degrees along the path of this semicircle. Now let's say that I want these four circles to also appear on this half of the face. Instead of uh, drawing these circles over and over again, I can use the mirror tool to reflect them over this line so that they end up duplicated over here. Once I select the mirror button, a window pops up which asks me to select the shapes that I want to reflect. I'll select these four circles and the mirror line is the line about which these four circles will be reflected. And I'll select this line. Once I click apply, four circles appear on this half of the face. So to recap, instead of drawing one circle multiple times, I just use the rectangular and circular pattern tool as well as the mirror tool to duplicate this circle. Finally, let's click finish sketch and we'll extrude these circles to make holes. So if we select every single circle, if it's difficult we can always zoom in to better highlight the circle. And to create holes, we'll just flip the direction around and click OK. And you'll notice that all of these holes pop up in our solid. Now let's go over how to create text. Select a new sketch on a face of our solid. And let's go ahead and use the text tool up here. If we click anywhere, a window appears and we can type in our text. Up here, we have all our formatting options. So if we highlight our text, we can adjust the center justification, the middle justification, the font size, let's say 0.125 inches. We can bold it, italicize it, and underline it. And we can also change the type of font here. If we click OK, you'll notice that our text pops up. Press escape to exit text mode, and we can drag our text around. Let's say I want to center this text box along this face of the solid. We're going to have to use the dimension tool. First, let's take a measurement for this length, which is 5 inches, and when that window pops up, just click accept. Let's also take a measurement for the height. Now, let's take the dimensions of this text box. You'll notice that uh, a kind of irrational number pops up, but luckily we can edit it to be a more round number. So let's change that to 2 inches, and you'll notice that our text box grows, and we'll change the height to be 0.25 inches. Now, let's go ahead and do some math. We have 5 inches total horizontally to work with, and our text box takes up 2 inches of space. That leaves 3 inches of free space that we can use. If we want our text box to be centered, we need that 3 inches to be split evenly on the left and right of the text box. 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, 1 
which means that we need 1.5 inches of spacing on the left and right of the text box. So let's edit that number to be 1.5. And to double check, if we take this measurement, you'll notice that there are 1.5 inches of spacing on the right. Let's do a similar uh, procedure vertically. If we have one inch total of space and the text box takes up a quarter of an inch of space, that leaves us three quarters of an inch to work with. Divide that by two and we get 0.375 inches. And to double check, we can always take that measurement and we'll notice that it is also 0.375 inches. This means that our text box is now centered. Now let's go ahead and finish our sketch. And let's say we want this text to pop out. To make our text pop out a bit, we'll use the extrude tool and as our profile, we'll select the text. Now, to make our text appear kind of flat with the surface, we'll make the extrusion distance very small, such as 0.001 inches. And we'll select OK. And you'll notice after that, our text is now 3D, but it only pops out of the surface a very tiny bit. Now let's say that I want to change the appearance of this 3D solid so that it's no longer this default material. If I head over to the ribbon and I select this drop down menu, a list of different materials show up. Let's say I want to change the appearance of this solid to become chrome. If I press C on my keyboard, a bunch of materials that start with the letter C show up and I'll select chrome polished blue. Now you'll notice that the appearance of our 3D solid changes. I can also select certain surfaces and make them individually a different appearance. So if I select these surfaces by holding shift and clicking them so they highlight, I can change them to be a different material such as gold. I can also select the inner surfaces of our holes and by holding shift and clicking the inner surfaces of all these holes. I can also change their appearance. Now let's say that I want to change the color of a face, but I don't want to use this materialist dropdown. Instead, I can use this little color wheel that is labeled adjust over here. If I select a surface and then I click on this little color icon, a color wheel pops up and I can adjust the color of my surface to be any color I want. The last thing I'd like to go over is the measure tool. If you head over to our tools tab, you'll notice that there's a little ruler icon. This is the measure tool and we can use it to measure angle, area, or length. To measure an angle, hold shift and select three vertices. And you'll notice that an angle measurement pops up. And the angle is measured at the second vertice. To measure length, simply click a side length or select two vertices such as two vertices that can create this diagonal. Also, if you look under delta, the delta gives you the distance between the two points with respect to x, y, and z. Finally, the measure tool can also measure the area of a face. Here you can see it measures the area of this top face and it even excludes the area taken up by these holes.